Hi, my name is Aaron Zimmon. Uh, I'm a final year PhD student here at the MIT Media Lab, and I like to think about new ways for people to communicate online. <laughs> uh, Greg Elliott, I'm a first year's master's student here at the MIT Media Lab, and I look at new ways for people to interact with machines and make uh, reduce complexity in interacting with them. So MIT, as you know, is a premier technological institute, um, but we also have uh, a big kind heart, right? Uh, and we like to think about us as tackling large problems across the world, uh, the bigger the better. And when we had this disastrous earthquake in Haiti, uh, we, uh, as an institute we came together thinking about what are the different ways that we could tackle this very large problem? What are the things that MIT is uniquely positioned to do to come up creatively with new technologies um, or provide assistance in other ways? Uh, for the people of Haiti. Um, you know, uh, Aaron had sort of a very broad uh, vision for how to, how to connect people and, and get communication back online uh, in a chaotic structure. And then we both started thinking about how, you know, what would we do in Boston if something like this happened in the first five minutes? What do you do to handle the chaos? What, what would you need to know? What, what would help, you know, everyone feel better and, and, and have a place and a, a, a position and something to do? And so we started thinking about skill indexing. And if we knew ahead of time what people could do, then we could sort of direct traffic right away and say, this guy's a, a natural leader, and this person is a doctor, and this person is a you know, counselor. And so you could start to actually manage people right after a disaster. And so given the fact that the earthquakes already happened, and we can't build the system for immediate disaster response, what can we do in the medium term, uh, which is what we actually would have the time to be able to do? If we still had the skill data, could we start to do something new with it? And we kept hearing over and over again um, in the political discussion in this class that oftentimes NGOs who are um, some of the biggest employers in Haiti classically, uh, they often bring in their own people, uh, Americans, Canadians, Israelis, whatever, instead of hiring local Haitians, even though they might be able to do the same job, simply because it's difficult to even figure out in a chaotic system where do you even turn? If you don't have things like Monster.com, if half the population is already illiterate and maybe can't use existing newspapers, then it's, it's difficult to go through this kind of process. And so we sympathized with this, but said, I think we could do better technologically. And we could build a system that actually is able to make it easier for NGOs to find uh, Haitian nationals. And that was one of the major issues was literacy. You know, a lot of these systems that you see that use mobile phone technology rely on someone being able to read those text messages, send a lot of them back, and we started thinking, well, what if you do if you can't read? Um, and so we, we wanted to create a system that would allow people to use just their natural voice, listen to things, speak back, because why should they be left out um, from the, the, the job employment sector? And then how could we actually humanize uh, job searching more and not just make it I can cook, but what about your life has allowed you to cook and can we get some life experience and really humanize the whole situation? So our intention with this system, which by the way is free and open source, so we're not making any money off of this. All of our work is put out there for free. Anyone can take the system, change it, repurpose it, however they'd like. Okay, so I just want to make that clear to start with. Our intention in, in building the system out in our partnerships is that we're trying to get Haitian national jobs and make it easier for employers to come in and be able to find these people, especially a population that traditionally would be very hidden. And it might normally be through word of mouth, through kind of social networks. We like to be a lot more equitable and targeted. Um, and, and we think that there's a lot of special things that we're doing with that in here, and especially because in building this database and having it be really end to end from indexing skills to the search by the potential employers to the job recruitment integrated into the system, we then get to start to see who's getting jobs, um, not just from one organization, which normally only knows about themselves but across all organizations. So we can really be much more equitable in sharing jobs across organizations across the population.